Hey there, friends. My name is Jeff Fritz, and you might know me as C Sharp Fritz out there on on Twitter or GitHub or Twitch or some of those other places. And uh, I'm going to start this series teaching the basics of C Sharp. We're going to call this C Sharp in the Cards. So let's let's get started. You need to know that this series is designed for these versions, 12 and .NET 8. Those were the versions released in November 2023. So if you're watching sometime in the future, 2025 and later, there are new features that are available that aren't covered in the beginning of this series. They might be added a little bit later on in an update episode. All of the samples in this series, because it's called C Sharp in the Cards, they relate back to a deck of cards. We're going to make those instructions and the learnings about the programming language very concrete and relatable for you. Now. The C Sharp language is part of a larger ecosystem called .NET. That means that there's all kinds of tools and libraries and features available out there that are going to help make you more productive and help you build applications, build computer programs faster. Now, your C Sharp code is going to run through something called a compiler that's going to turn that, that code that we write into executable instructions for a computer processor and it's going to run on top of what's called a runtime on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and even the Tizen operating system. It can run on a bunch of different processors as well from folks like Intel and AMD and even ARM-based processors. Now the output of the C-sharp code that you write can be called a .NET program. That's what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to write a program. So to get up and running, just a couple things that you need to do. You can download a software development kit from the website dot.net. You can also get started with the online notebooks and code samples at the website we stood up for this series called csharpinthecards.com. So there's a bunch of different runtimes. I mentioned some of the operating systems out there, but there are runtimes available called things like .NET Framework, and that was built back in 2002 to run on Windows. There's also Xamarin that was built to run on other operating systems besides Windows. You could run that on iOS and Android and Mac OS so that you could build applications for those operating systems. The new modern .NET is just called .NET. For a while it was called .NET Core, but the versions that you see available now, .NET 6, 7, 8, and later, they're all just called .NET, and they run on Windows, Mac, Linux, and you can even build with things for iOS, Android, and Tizen. Unity is a runtime that's available that folks use to build games and other mixed reality or virtual reality applications. Mono is a runtime that's available that's open source and made available by a bunch of folks in the community to build some other interesting applications. There's a bunch of frameworks available that you can use to target different styles of applications you may want to deliver. You may want to build a native Windows application, and we use Windows Forms to do that, to build that, that Battleship Gray application that you've probably seen on Windows. If you want to use a little bit higher processing, graphically intense capabilities, we can use something called Windows Presentation Foundation, or WPF. ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core are frameworks that we use to build web applications, and ASP.NET Core is the new modern web framework that we use to deliver applications with things like a model view controller architecture or Razor pages or something like Blazor that allows us to even build and deliver with components that run either on a server or in a browser using something called WebAssembly. More about that later. Xamarin Forms and .NET MAUI are those frameworks that were available for us to build applications that run on mobile operating systems. And there's also community-based frameworks like the Uno platform and Avalonia that allow you to build with similar architectures to some of these other frameworks, but deliver and run slightly differently on even more operating systems and frameworks. Check them out from those organizations as well. So let's get into the basics of syntax. How do you write your first application? How do you write your first bits of code here? 
you've downloaded that .NET SDK, what do you do next? Well, you're going to start writing C Sharp files. They're, they're just plain text files that end with a .cs file extension. All of your statements are going to end with a semicolon. And C Sharp is not space sensitive. You can use tabs or spaces and insert as many blank lines or spaces between characters as you would like. You just have to keep whole words together. But you want to put spaces be between the words and commands that you put? Go to town. Make your code look as readable to your human eyes as you need it to be. However, it is case sensitive. So if you do decide to mix upper and lower case, you will need to make sure that you maintain that casing throughout all references to your commands. Code blocks need to be wrapped in curly braces. So we have a, a collection of statements that need to be executed together. We're going to wrap them in curly braces. Every one of those statements must end with a semicolon. The curly braces do not. They just wrap those commands. Comments that we want to place in our code, notes about things that we want to write, they can appear on any line after a double slash. Now, you can write some code and then double slash and comment the rest of the line, or you can start a brand new line with a double slash and that entire line is a comment. It's up to you. And you can also put a little bit of fencing around your code when you want to comment out a whole series of lines with a slash star star slash fencing. So anything that appears between the stars is commented out. So on one line, you put slash star and everything after that until it hits a star slash is all commented out. That's about all we're going to cover today. Just to get us started, make sure you get out there and download the SDK at dot dot net so that you can start writing some C sharp code in our next episode where we talk about working with numeric types and how we can start to do some basic math with C-sharp.